Hi, Lorenza. Um, Hi. Thanks for being our first ENFP. Um, so the subject of this video is to explain to people that are attracted to an ENFP or are in a relationship with an ENFP or are in a, a friend with an ENFP and want to know more uh, about them, want to understand them better, maybe to improve their relationship with them or maybe to seduce them. Um, so that's the point of that video and I think that there is no better uh, to explain that than a real ENFP like you. So maybe you can introduce yourself quickly. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Lorenza. I come from France and uh, I'm 25 years old and I'm an ENFP. Okay, great. Um, so first question uh, that we have noticed in ENFPs and that I think a lot of people want to understand uh, more about uh, that is uh, your duality about uh, being thinking that you're an introvert and at the same time being such an extrovert. So basically, um, I think uh, ENFP situation is really interesting because uh, we indeed have a need to be like uh, with lots of people. Uh, we, we have the need to be in contact with, the, with people. Because I think it, uh, it gives us an energy, so that's basically what you can read on the website, etc. But I have the feeling that it, um, personally for me, it, it fills me up with energy and, uh, and we have this uh, spontaneity that, that makes us need this. But on the other hand, and that's what I've come to realize from my personal experience, when we don't have enough time to be like, with herself um, it can be very damaging for an ENFP because uh, uh, when we're in our heads when we are in our thoughts and in our little world it permits to um, balance this energy that we have you know and sometimes this energy is very very strong and um, we need to have time to figure out to it can be organize ourselves in our heads for daily tasks because it's something that's sometimes difficult for us. So we need time, you know, proper time alone to do that. And also to make points on our life, etc. It's really important. So it's true that uh, I really feel sometimes that I'm between E and between uh, I. And um, that I, I have this world inside of me. But on the same hand, I really need to be around people. Because otherwise, it's, uh, it's just too hard for me. And it's it's not myself so um, when do you feel that need to um to get with yourself and how does it uh, manifest in your life well i think there's a really important point in enfp it's the sensitivity and uh, there are lots of uh, people in this world who feel things like i don't know how you say in english but hypersensible um, um hyper, hyper hypersensible anyway, I don't know if it's the word, but um, having lots of information from outside coming in our heads. And uh, I, I put this in the same basket as a social network, um, phone calls, etc. I mean, it, it's a lot to deal with. Like, for example, for me, I know that uh, this world we live in where we have to be connected all the time, check our mails, uh, be on the phone, oh, I send you a text, you didn't answer. Like for me, it's like really hard. And I'm not like pretending some, sh I mean, it's, it's really something that, that, that I, I have troubles to really follow, you know? So I think uh, indeed we, we, there's a need and it's not the case of course of all ENFPs, but for lots of ENFPs, there's like a, sometimes this, this needs to, to have your own, space to to breathe and there's also another point which is uh, in my opinion very important is that when an ENFP uh, talks to someone he puts his all energy into the conversation you know like there's really rarely some ENFP that will be like chit chat with you and not really paying attention to what you're saying or not really putting his mind into it of course it arrives but you know it's not really how we work 
So basically, when we're with some, someone, we're dedicating all our energy in, our, in the conversation, in the subject, and we're really passionate. And it, it, it's just not possible to be like this all the time, to be like this with all the people you talk to. So basically, I think um, this energy we put with others and the, the energy we get from others is sometimes really overwhelming and we really need our space and sometimes it translates by a kind of ghosting and that has nothing personal towards others. It's just that it's, it's too much and it can create anxiety issues sometimes, but that's another uh, subject. Okay, very interesting. Um, so that's your introvert part. Um, and now, I mean, your type is being an extrovert. Uh, naturally, you say you have a lot of energy in yourself. Uh, how does it manifest? Where do you put that energy? Where do you like to spread your energy? So uh, the energy that we have, I think, uh is put in various things such as uh, so the big conversations we have with people so the energy we have when we're with someone else and we're putting all our attention in the moment and in the in the thrive of the the subject that for example we we are dealing in a conversation uh, there's also the fact that we think a lot and we have a tendency to um to overthink some subjects which can be very good because it uh, it permits to, to have a sense of uh, lots of uh, truth in lots of subjects because we are always uh, searching for a form of truth, which is why we, we think a lot and we analyze things a lot. So ENFPs are not just like unicorns and, uh, you know, there's a, I think there's a dark side sometimes that can happen in an ENFP, you know, when you are a lot in your head, etc. And we can put also lots of uh, energy into art because it's a way for us to, to express, express ourselves um, for us, but also for others. It's a way to, to, to put your emotions into something so that it's clear for you, but it's also a message to others. And uh, that's a very important aspect of the NFPs, uh, transmitting things. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you're saying that um, you need like that super um, deep emotional connection. You need to be all the time um, super close with the person in terms of what you're thinking, in terms of what you're talking about. Um, and at the same time, um, there is something that is a bit known about uh, ENFPs is that they can get bored of someone or something very quickly. So how do you deal with that uh, need for being like extremely close and at the same time getting bored of some things? It's, it's love. Uh, this emotional connection, it, it, it's love. It, it's how we live our relationship. So when we don't have this, or there's really lack of this, we feel alone in our heads and not sharing things with our partner can be very like, uh, weird to us because it's our partner so it should be like a bit like us you know but sometimes um being too emotionally connected can end up to you being in a cup in a relationship with your boy boyfriend girlfriend as if it was entirely your best friend and in a way i think that a couple is not just two best friends you know there is a need for maybe a bit of mystery or a bit of distance, complementarity. So this need of uh, being very emotionally connected is very good and healthy to a certain extent. And uh, so I think this is important to, to criticize. Even sexually, sometimes it can be so like uh, um, knowing exactly what's going on in your partner's head and you know, knowing him by heart and being like exactly like him, etc., or her, can lead to you know a lack of a little mystery or something in sexuality. So this is the first part. Uh, so if you're dating an ENFP, don't be too stressed out if you're not always on his mindset or her mindset because first of all, it's not possible all the time, and secondly, it it 
it's also healthy to have, you know, some uh, complementarity. The second point uh, that you were saying is the fact that we can be bored easily uh, in a relationship. So um, I think there's something to understand about ENFPs is that, okay, maybe some get bored really easily about people, but I think there's just a need to, um, I, I, I'm not going to put it like this. It's not seduce. It's just that we like other people liking us. So we're basically, everyone is a bit like that, of course. But in ENFPs, uh, there's this need to transmit things. And when you're transmitting, some, uh, transmitting something to someone, you're waiting directly or indirectly a feedback, you know. And I think it can uh, be a play with uh, the ENFP partner. They can like put this in their relationship and make their relationship a little bit playful. Like for example, uh, I don't know, but just play around with uh, the idea of seduction and etc. Not not being in a mood that's too like, you know, because mm -hmm. of course this is going to be a bit harsh on ENFP. But ENFPs once again are into commitments, uh, have strong feelings and uh, need connection and they wouldn't be creating a connection like this to just like this, the connection and just uh, going and uh, sleeping around uh, without any carry. Okay, so yeah, that's a, a big point about ENFPs. Also, there is this subject about uh, them making choices, uh, I guess because they have so many information, maybe more than other people, uh, it's getting hard to uh, actually like take a choice that limits uh, the ENFP. What do you think about, about that? I think it's really interesting and um, it's really true. I, uh, one day I made an improvisation, impro class, theater class, and um, I had a blank when I was supposed to improvise. And the teacher told me, when you have a blank in your head and you don't know what to say, it's not because you don't have enough uh, possibilities in your head of what to say. It's, not, it's because you have too much possibility and your head blocks out. Um, I think there's a lot of truth in it. And I think that the impossibility of making a choice in uh, the ENFP comes from the fact that we tend to overanalyze and over um, plan a situation. So we are in fact very organized because we over plan a lot on things. We have like a view on the future that can be very, very important, but sometimes there are so much like, that we're like, okay, uh, what is the, the, the right direction? What is the good thing? What is the right path to take? And, uh, and we get uh, very lost because we have um, a brain that is uh, on arborescence, which is like, like a tree with lots of ramifications and makes us sometime, you know, spread a, a bit. And it, it, it's just hard to balance after which is the right thing. I, I, I think, and, um, and this is something that we can uh, have a lack in. Mm. And so um, other people can be really helpful. Other MBT type can be really helpful. Like for example, if you're at a restaurant, uh, I have friends when I'm just like on the card and I don't know what to choose between a fucking pizza or, a salad or whatever, you know, and they're like, okay, I, I pick for you and don't think about it. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Because that just, you know, that takes energy for me, like. Yeah, okay. So um, for like uh, choices that don't matter a lot, you like people taking charge, kind of. Yes. But yes, for, yes. For, for um, subjects that, uh, that matter, uh, like for example, choice of... Um, career what, or... A, sorry? A choice of career or yes. uh, whatever. Career, what do you want to do in life? What... Uh, things like that, things that are very important for you, how do you eventually make a choice? Do you need to talk about it a lot also with someone? Is, does, does your partner need to talk about it with you a lot? Well, or does, does they need to leave you alone and just like make, you know, think on yourself? 
That's a very, very good question because that's exactly uh, the point of the thing. I think like um, concerning the trouble of making choice for an NFT, um, so we have this aspect of, you know, all of the, all the directions, you know. So we have to have a time in order to process all the possible direction that we have in our heads and we need to have some time to process this alone. But I think sometimes uh, having uh, the opinion of our partner is very important to us, first of all, because it shows that he's connected to you, which is important for an NFP connected to your concerns, which is very important for an NFP. And uh, because sometimes uh, we need an external point of view because we can, it's exactly like when you're launching your company or, uh, or you know, you're just like a horse and you have these things around your head and you're, you, we can easily get lost in so much things. So it's important sometimes to have someone who's like, okay, this, this and that. Even if we're very organized in our heads, because actually we are, but it's just, you know, taking some fresh air, mm. taking some fresh air out of your head. So it's important sometimes to have someone who's blowing air on you and helping you make the right decision. Okay. Um, and a bit linked to that. Um, so let's say when you have make, made a choice, uh, the planning to get to that goal or to get to um, realize what you have uh, chosen um, can be also difficult for an ENFP, right? Actually, um, I don't know if it's just me or uh, I don't know, but I have a feeling that ENFPs can be really good predictors of what is going to happen. And the reason they're really good predictors is because they have a good instinct of things, but also because with this instinct, they predict the steps. So basically, I think that um, when ENFPs have a goal, the problem is not really that they don't know how to achieve this goal, because I think they do know and I think they are very good planners, uh, paradoxically. But I think, on the other hand, that it can be hard when you're very much in your head to go into action. You know, in, in uh, psychology, some, uh, some psychologists says, say that uh, when you're a lot here, you're not a lot in your body. You know, when you're a lot in your head, you're not too much in your body. That's also what you learn in meditation. So basically, ENFPs sometimes can have very big like uh, possibilities in their head and I want to do this and I really want it to look like that and I know it can happen like this, this step, this step. But going into action and materialize this can be hard for them. And even if they start to materialize this, there's a lot of pressure in their heads because of all the thinking of the possibilities that this project can have. And this pressure can be like counterproductive, you know. Mm. So a good, uh, a good thing to do when uh, you're an ENFP and you want to start on a new project or just uh, continue a project, uh, it's just not to think and be like, okay, let's do it even if I'm doing a crappy stuff. Like for example, if you have to paint, let's just paint. And even if I'm doing a, a crappy uh, drawing I, I will have done it you know sometimes it's important not to overthink and go uh, i wanted to ask you uh, one last question uh, for you what is what are the most important things you need in a relationship i would say that um, an enfp doesn't necessarily like for me i would not necessarily have to be with uh, another enfp or whatever i think uh, we could be actually with lots of types of course, I have preferred types like uh, anyone, but I think the most important thing uh, is communication. So I know it's so basic to say that and to hear something like this, but let me explain. In order to understand, to respect the other's difference and the other's uh, different point of view and the other's feeling, you need to understand them. And by understanding, I don't mean experiencing them because you're not them, but just um, 
understand the idea of it and respecting it, which is why, uh, to an extent, I think the MBTI is really interesting because it permits to have a key of lecture, uh, of a reading, sorry, a key of reading to uh, what could be happening in someone else's mind. Mm. And uh, even if it's a bit uh, generalized and uh, it's, uh, everybody's very different and uh, not just ENFP and have lots of colors, I think it's just um, a way to understand the others. And uh, in a way, MBTI is a way of communication, you know, to understand the others. So I think that the most important thing for an, EF, for an ENFP is um, to communicate and uh, to get uh, communication on feedback on uh, how the other person is feeling. And this is really important. I know it can seem a bit uh, like bullshit like this, but no, it's, uh, it's a really important point in order for uh, an ENFP to understand what is going on in someone else's mind and because they need connection. So I just want to say that it's absolutely not bullshit. Uh, and this is what ENFP feels and like millions of million and millions of people think uh, the same as you do. So don't apologize for anything that you feel and um, stay yourself because you're great. Thank you, uh, Lorenza, for all those explanations about ENFPs. I, I hope it's clearer for all of the people that might be uh, close to any uh, ENFP in their lives and we'll be back Thank you. Uh, <laughs> with other types to, to, for you to understand better the people that you're surrounded with. So thank you. Bye. And thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.